Hey everybody, Kelly here coming to you from West Coast Piercing in sunny Surrey, BC with my trusty assistant Jules. Today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about what is an insertion taper and how do we use it to be able to assist us to put a piece of jewelry in the body or to be able to remove it. For those of you that have never seen an insertion taper, I've got a bunch of different sizes here. These are for all different thicknesses of jewelry. I'm going to show you one of the biggest ones because it's a little bit easier for you to see at this point on the camera. So what that piece is, it looks very similar to a very large needle, but there's no sharp cutting end on the one side. If you look closely, you'll notice that the one side is a little bit thinner than the other side. What we would do for this, if this was say an earlobe piercing, a large earlobe, we would be putting the small side into the hole and we're using a piece of jewelry to be able to push this out through the hole. This allows us to seamlessly follow through with that. I'm going to give you a little bit of an example. Again, a little bit harder to see at this point, but you're going to see an up close demonstration shortly. So this is a, a smaller concave um, uh, taper and again, designed for a ring style. You can kind of pivot that on there so it doesn't just fall off and again I'd be able to push that through the piece or, or the body part on there as well. If I was doing something such as a navel bar, this one's already had the top removed on there, there's two different types of uh, or styles that we would use for this. One is called a pin taper. A pin taper has a little bit of a, a tip sticking off the end and what that does is it slides right into the very end of that piece of jewelry. So if I was to hold on to just the jewelry, that pin is actually staying up there. The reason why we would use something like this is we can slide it into the site and we can quickly pull that off there. For those frady cats on there or you're worried about uh, having a hard time getting in there, I strongly recommend threaded tapers. A threaded taper looks much the same except for it's got little threads on the end and what that does, much like the gem that would um, initially go onto this navel bar is I can take this taper and thread it right to the piece of jewelry. Now it's all attached on that piece of uh, jewelry on there as well, makes it super easy to be able to start from say inserting this into a navel, we'd be coming in through the bottom hole, sliding it up through the top, I can now grab onto the top, pull it upwards, and now I can actually undo that out of the site and reinstall my gem onto the top side. So now we're going to get into some actual hands-on demonstrations for you. So we're going to be showing a nostril demonstration here using a pair of brass tip clamps that's to help to prevent damage to the jewelry. This is a threadless piece of jewelry and it's simple holding onto the base of it and pulling on the top. Some of these are in there fairly tight so they take a little bit of a wiggle factor. There's a couple different techniques to be able to do it. You can check out our threadless tutorial video which will give you a better close up on this specific style but this is more about how do we use those insertion tapers. So right now she's using her pinker from pinky finger just to be able to hold a little bit of balance to the back and she'll be using a threadless taper to push the piece of jewelry backwards out of the nose. Ta-da! Made it super easy to remove that piece of jewelry out the bottom side without anything falling apart. Now we're going to give a demo of using a concave taper to be able to slide a ring into her nose. So make sure that if you're putting something into a site, you always want to use a little bit of water-based lubrication just to be able to make your slide a little bit easier for you on there as well too. Very good. That concave is really great for being able to uh, get the sides of rings in because very often rings have a flat tip on them and they need something to be able to buck up against to make that slide easier. Nose is one of the most ornery uh, places on the body to be able to put jewelry in and out of. If you love your nostril piercing, you will mostly always keep something in there. Otherwise, it can be quite uncomfortable to slide things back in days, weeks, months later. And for those that come in years later and we know they're open, they can be quite uncomfortable. So she did that piece up. There's a great example on there. Hey, nice ring. Thank you. Okay, now let's see what it's like to be able to do the reinsertion of this threadless piece of jewelry. Now because the site has just had jewelry uh, taken back out of it, uh, it's fairly easy for you to be able to use that insertion taper to slide back in. If this had been out for a period of time, it takes a little bit of work in there, so don't beat yourself up doing it. If you ever need assistance, feel free to reach out to us at info at westcoastpiercing.com or directly on our live chat services or come see us at the showroom directly. So again, she's used those brass tip clamps, which we sell at westcoastpiercing.com to be able to hold on to the jewelry, ensuring that you're not causing damage or mars to it. We also do have a plain forcep on, available on there if you do need the little teeth to be able to grab onto your jewelry a little bit firmer. Do double check the aftercare tutorial video that talks about the use of forceps and how to protect your jewelry best with that. 
and in goes the little pin. This will take a little bit of pressure more to push downwards and it can look a little bit awkward sometimes. Um, so you do need to learn how the uh, pressure feels, feels on the bend of the threadless piece of jewelry when going to put these back in there. If they are not bent enough, they will uh, be very loose and be, uh, tend to fall out easier. And if they are too tight, you are not gonna get your jewelry back in there very nicely on there because you have to put so much pressure on it and you risk folding over the, the pin sideways. Hey, great job. And a navel demo. So, as you can see, she's got a really long navel bar in there. For those ladies that did not realize that navel bars come in many, many different sizes, know that you can get a size that fits you. We carry them in about eight or nine different lengths. So she's using a pin taper designed for internally threaded jewelry. This is just to be able to push the piece of jewelry out, makes it super easy. For those people that do have a little bit of dexterity, it makes it really easy. You don't have to fight with them normally. <laughs> um, they just slide on and slide off, but it keeps it in place very well. For those people that have a harder time with stuff in there, I'd recommend going with a threaded style. A threaded style, you don't have to worry about the connection coming apart. For some people, they have a, a harder body parts to reach or might have uh, physical impairments and whatnot that makes things a little bit harder. So if you can use a, a threaded piece of um, a threaded taper, it'll make your life a little bit easier. As you can see, it stays all together the whole thing to be able to slide out and you don't have to worry about it. Now you saw that giant navel bar unicorn looking out of there. We're going to change this piece of jewelry up for her as well. So we've got the taper in the navel, going to be attaching the uh, new shorter piece that would be much more suitable for this tiny navel. And again, not going to have to fight with it because we'll be able to thread it onto the piece of jewelry, slide it into the site and just pull upwards on it. And that just pulls it right into sight, but you don't have to worry about actually losing connection. If you need a pair of clamps, again, we recommend a brass tip clamp. It protects your jewelry a little bit better than a traditional forcep that does have teeth, but sometimes you need something where you do have a little bit more grip. Uh, we'll talk more about that in another video. You can always reference our aftercare and jewelry tutorial video as well. So now just reinstalling the top gem onto the smaller uh, navel bar that will fit nicely into this tiny little navel. Easy peasy. Make sure you're always cranking things up nice and tight because you don't want to be losing your fancies. Ta-da! Okay, and now we're going to show you uh, an earlobe piercing. This would work for Helix as well. For most people, you can't see behind your head. So she's using a little bit of a uh, turning motion from the front side in there just to be able to find the hole with a little bit of lubrication and a little bit of back pressure with her fingers on the back side to be able to push this thing through. She's going to run that through there all the way through and pull it all the way through the ear and then going to do it one more time on there as well just to ensure that the site is opened up uh, nice and smoothly so that when you do go to insert it from the back, side it slides through nice and easily. So now she's going to turn the piece around there and slide the taper from the back side of the ear. A little bit of finger pressure to the front side in there just adds a little bit of back pressure so the skin is not being stretched out too far. And then we'll be able to do the reinsertion of the flat back from the back side. Flat backs are very common these days for threadless jewelry and for threaded jewelry. And again, straight push. You're pushing that piece of jewelry up through your fingers in the hole. This is really seamless. It does not hurt at all. And then taking your top, whether it's a threaded or threadless piece, uh, in this case it's a threadless, to be able to pop back onto the top side or to drop it right into the ear makes it really great on there as well. So know that this is a normal thing that can happen. Sometimes we fumble around with our jewelry sometimes things fall in there. If you're concerned about dropping something, especially in an ear, put a Q-tip in your ear. It will help to keep small pieces of jewelry from falling in there. So hopefully today those little demos have helped you with your insertion and removal questions on there. Uh, all of the tools that you saw today are directly available on our website, westcoastpiercing.com. Just click on the supplies tab. If you're ever running into any questions or concerns, call us, email, come see us, whatever you need to do. We also do have live chat directly on the website to be able to help you to walk you through those things on there as well. I also would recommend checking out some of our other tutorials on uh, threadless jewelry, uh, captive bead rings, seam rings, and our aftercare and jewelry tutorial. Have a great day. Hopefully that worked for you.